Okay, um, so we've established a connection to the controller, and we're going to take a look now at the web interface. Okay, so you've got a number of tabs to choose from down the left here. Um, you got a title and lock across the top, um, a little user um, config tool up the up the right here, change password, log out, and then um, you've got all your information for this particular tab. Um, so it just gives us an overview. The first home home pad, the controller's name, the BACnet ID. Um, the host ID, which is unique to the device and is used for licensing. Um, so if you need to update the license, um, it will be stored under the host ID and you must provide that to make any changes to it. Um, the MAC address, like we talked about before, um, which is hard-coded against the Ethernet, the dual Ethernet ports. Um, so these two numbers here would be the last two numbers of that um, IP address from before. Um, these, these are of course written in um, hexadecimal and that's got to be converted to, to decimal if you want to know the, um, the numbers. Um, the date and time of the controller, so you can spot if um, the controller has the incorrect date. This is important for controllers that use um, time schedules for the purpose of control. Um, it can pretty much detect whether it's connected to the internet and give you the public IP address. Once again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, you can kind of ignore that. Um, and these are the two applications, primarily, that the controller uses. So the one that we're going to be looking at, EC GFX program, and InVision, which is a, a graphics program, which we're also going to be looking at. Um, we'll go to the next section, which is um, network. Okay, so like I just said, I have preset these fields. Um, so you probably don't need to update these. But, um, by default it comes on DHCP which just looks like that. Um, you can get a wireless dongle to connect into the controller to give it Wi-Fi um, and then there's various states that you can use that thing so you can use it so that it becomes an access point or it connects to another network or other people can connect to this network. So you get a couple of options there when you connect the Wi-Fi dongle in. Um, a small page for diagnostics. Um, Wi-Fi monitor or ping monitor. So I'll just put the gateway in here for example or my PC rather. I'll just put my, my PC in it will just be able to tell you the ping times um, and similar to how we saw in the command line this is just a different way of displaying the same information okay the next tab is the uh, backnet settings so the key settings for backnet IP is the device ID but once you have the device ID um, you don't really need anything else Sometimes it takes a combination of IP address and device ID. This one has its IP BACnet ID preset um, by the network. So the moment that you set this, it'll use the combination of these two numbers here to set the device ID. Okay. Um, it'll ask you what. Um, 
it won't ask you. It will be set set by default as the IP address because it's BACnet IP, um, and there's various BACnet settings that you can fill out. Um, this sort of thing you don't really need to know about um, at the moment, at least. The key is um, the device ID here. You can change the controller name as well to whatever you'd, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, the users, so it comes with one user by default. Um, you can add another user. So we will do that now. Just as an example, we're going to set in um, a view only view only user. Just make it view only one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, and here's where you can give it various levels of access so that um, depending on what that user needs to be able to achieve I'm just going to give them the viewer in the Eclipse roles um, there's a couple of um, BLE room device roles as well um, you can give it a home page which later on we'll be giving it um, the graphics page that we'll create as the home page. So as soon as that person logs in, you know, they're no longer going to see all of this that we can see. Instead, they'll just be directed to their graphics um, and then they will probably be able to control some kind of page back and then have some monitored points that they can see instead of, you know, all these configuration options. Um, you can also, you know, update, edit, and change your password. Um, and I think finally we have the system settings. Probably not going to get into the the Bluetooth settings or the IoT settings. Um, I'm just going to glance over the system settings real quick for you. Um, the device runs software. Um, it's called firmware, and that firmware comes in the software center as the ECY server. I go show all files, show files on my computer. So it's just this one here, the ECY server is the firmware that gets stored in all ECY Eclipse controllers. Okay. So you can update that if there's a newer version. This one is already the latest version. Extensions, so some controllers can have um, various modules that you can tack on to the end of it. Um, with the 303, I think they're standalone and they don't have any extensions. Um, the date time, as mentioned before, is important. Um, so if you give the controller internet, it can update its own date time using the NTP servers. Um, the web server, so the current web page that we're looking at is provided by the web server. It's provided on HTTPS and it uses you know encryption. Um, so all these settings can be updated from here. You can turn on HTTP but there's no real need to do that. Uh, here's where you find the license info. So you can add Modbus devices for example to this ECY 303, it will be reflected in the license and you will have paid a little bit more for that license. Just as an example. The backup and restore page. Um, so you can create full backups of these controllers um, at which on a later date, if, uh, if anything goes wrong. Uh, 
um, you can just install the same model controller and restore it. Um, it's just good practice to store backups of all your controllers. Um, I'll create a backup now. So this is just going to be a sample, sample backup. Um, you can select as much as little as the configuration as you want. I like to select all. And then this is the graphics section. Um, so once again, select as much or as little as you want. Um, I'm going to unselect this section. Um, then you can choose the target. If you plug the USB stick into it, you can select that as the target. And then it will give you a rundown of what you're performing. And then you've got your new sample here, sample backup, of which you can view, restore, or download. And then this will become your backup that you will save to your local PC somewhere. Okay. And then you can go ahead and um, use this other function, import backup from PC, drop it in there. Um, simple enough, I think so. Um, after viewing all that, um, we will get started on the controls aspect of the course finally. So um, click on the ECY graphics application. Um, you have to have it installed and it should open directly up into it or give you this warning. Um, in which case you will just select open. Okay, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.